Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometer. Thank you so much for logging on, tuning in. They click links and they're on. So I don't even know what they do. <laughs> I don't know how you got to this part of town, but welcome. <laughs> We're glad you're here. We're going to talk to author Elizabeth Horton Newton uh, here on the floor of Indie Book Fest 2019 in Orlando, wow. Florida. Uh, Elizabeth is the author of Stolen Gypsy. If you're missing a gypsy, she knows where she is. He is. She. They are. She is. She. She. Is. She. <laughs> she knows where she is because <laughs> stolen gypsy right here. Um, Elizabeth, thank you so much for hanging with us. Thank you for having awesome. me. Awesome. Thanks for coming out. So let's talk about stolen gypsy. Okay. Um, give us the book blurb first of all. The book blurb. Now that's tough. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, how about if I just give you a little roundabout thing of it? We'll take that. Okay. Oh yeah, they like that idea because <laughs> then they can Google it later and they'll find the book and then they'll buy it and. Then we'll be best-selling authors and, oh, never mind, it's a good deal. Let's go. Let's do <laughs> I'm that. I'm up for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Teresa, Teresa Blackstone is a high school student. She's a gypsy. Although, remember, gypsies don't like to be called gypsies. They like to be called Rom, Rom. or Romani. That's right, Romani. But we use the term gypsy. Okay. And um, this particular day in high school, her she sees this fire from the school, and it turns out that her parents were leaving town, leaving her behind, and they died in a car accident. Well, here's this teenage girl all on her own now, and the state, of course, steps in. Turns out they weren't really her parents. Hmm. And then the question is, well, who are her parents? Where are her parents? And wow. who is she? Is she even really Romani? And there's a whole lot going on in this uh, with the Witness wow. Protection Program and the FBI and a drug cartel. Yeah, lots of action. And Gypsy's just where she started. Yeah. Oh, and then, yeah. then there were places and things and layers. And yes, and, and a, a really, of course, sexy and attractive uh, Irish gentleman comes to help her. He finds her trying to get away from the FBI because they're holding her, but she manages to get out of the hospital. And whole, oh, There's a lot of stuff going on there's here. There's a whole lot of stuff going on in this book. Wow. A whole lot of stuff. But, uh, yeah, he's sexy. And his sister, you'll like this, his sister uh, has a home for unwed teenage mothers. Yeah. Just, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. This, this is, a lot. Wow. Okay, so this stand all by itself? Yes, it is. Yes, it, it is. Stands I would alone. never do it again, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about that. Let's okay. talk about diving into a world that has got so much going on to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, where did you start? What, what drew you to telling this story? What it, did you start with? It was my fascination with the Witness Protection Program. I okay. thought, well, I wondered, did anybody ever die, you know, in Witness Protection? Were they ever killed? Turns out it's a very effective program. Uh, it's run by the U.S. Marshals Service, which was news to me. I thought maybe the FBI did it or, no, nope, U.S. Marshals. And only one person has ever been killed, and that's somebody who actually came out. So, oh, didn't stay. No. So if you stay, you're okay. But you come out, it's over. Okay. That's, yeah. See, if, you're, if you go into witness protection, stay there. Stay that's, there. That's, yes. You'll be safe. Hopefully. Oh. Unless, They got course, a good average. So far. <laughs> really doing, good. Elizabeth did the research here. They have a really good average. Yeah. You're doing all right. Which says a lot for government. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Just hold it for a second. <laughs> yes, especially today. Okay, it, it is what it is, folks. Um, okay, so you dove into the witness protection program mm -hmm. and said, you know, how, oh, do people die? And what, yeah. you know, what's going on here? And then, of course, I started to think about, well, what would happen if you were a child, and you know, they missed you and they lost you. Well, that's kind of what happened to Terza. She kind of got lost. Just lost in because being a child and somewhere on. Wow, with the, between the witness protection and yes, the child. Yes, she, she got retaken by people in her tribe or her community. Okay. And, of course, the, they never looked for her because she, she wasn't the witness. She wasn't under protection. It was actually her biological mother. So, yes, yeah, so don't bother looking for the kid. Yeah, That's, we it's just... like, oh, well, she's dead, whatever, wherever she is, we don't care. Wow, okay. Yes, so for... So now all of these of things that are going on simultaneously here yeah. in your story, um, it sounds like they just sort of, they just, each one kind of hitchhiked. 
as yes. you went along. Kind yes. of like, okay, I'm starting with the witness protection, and okay, and I've got this kid, mm -hmm. and then I've got this Romani background, and mm -hmm. and then now there's murder, more, you know, mayhem, and so you just every time you passed the end of a chapter, yeah. you had a new hitchhiker. Yeah. Pretty a much, new that's genre how it worked. Of hitchhiker. That's pretty much how it worked. Wow! And there's a backstory as far as the Irish people who who help her and rescue her. Uh, I won't go into that, but there's a backstory there too, which is another mystery that comes out. Wow! So it's got a whole lot going on, and the drug cartel is like well, my so favorite part. You've got a whole part. lot going on as you're writing. This yes. Too. You can feel it. You really can. Yes. You can feel this, the energy that's coming off of these characters mm -hmm. that are just pulling you in different fictional directions. Do, are, have any of those directions sort of drew you in? Are there any of those directions where you're like, well, I think I might have to talk about that again. I might have to go back there. And Actually, I have thought about that. Uh, I don't know if I will or not, but I have thought about uh, just Romani in general because I did a lot of they, research. What a fascinating history. It is. Uh, the Romani people in America, they have a, a, a pretty in-depth history right here in North right. America. Right, right. Um, but beyond that back yeah. in the old country and back in the Slavic nations and throughout there, they have a huge history. Well, it's really interesting because I also research them, of course. You know, well, what do I know? I learn yeah. different language terms, uh, histories, uh, beliefs. Um, you know how they, they say Romani steel. Okay. Well, there is a, I guess you'd call it a, a, a story that's passed down saying that when the reason they're allowed to steal, and God doesn't punish them for it, according to the Romani, is uh, when Jesus was crucified, there were supposed to be four nails, and one was supposed to go into his head, but a Romani boy stole it, and so it wasn't used, and so God gave them permission to steal. I like that, actually. That's a that's, legend. That's yes. a cool legend, by the way. Yeah. I don't know 500 years ago who thought that up, but brilliant. <laughs> yeah, hey. Should have been a writer. Uh, and it, that's, yeah, that's cool. isn't that neat? That is really, really cool. And they have um, another belief about separating the top of the body from the bottom. Like when you clean yourself, they have things on the bottoms of their sheets and their towels to tell the bottom from the top because you don't mix the two. Okay. Which All right. Is I also can, yeah, very, that's interesting. very interesting. Yeah. So I got to learn a lot. A lot of cultural stuff in oh, there. Oh, it's yeah. great. It so was is that, fun. Is it something calling you from that part of the story? It is. It is. It is. I yeah. think about that a lot. I See, think, once you wake the writer inside your mind up, it's hard to put it back to oh, sleep. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's out now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and my, my first book that I did, uh, View from the Sixth Floor and Oswald Tale, which is about an old couple, believe it or not, a senior couple, who uh, go to Dallas to study the Kennedy assassination. Oh. Wow. on the 50th anniversary that got me interested in the FBI and procedures and what would happen if there's always a, an if in there that the writer's favorite question is what if what if if you want to start a conversation with a writer that's going to go for days all you have to do is say what if we did this exactly and it's on exactly and so uh, my favorite thing to look at is I love to look at historical crimes or historical mm -hmm. happenings with an eye toward what if today. Yes. With the technology we have, the procedures it we have. It would be the, so different. It would. It'd be so, the, it, the whole world would be turned upside down. Something like Kennedy would yeah. be that, first of all, the case, not so difficult for a modern forensic team. Oh, not at all. If they could be on site and on, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, not so difficult as it was in 1963. And secondly, just it would just turn the world upside down. It would. With modern. It would. Technology. And I traveled to Dallas. I actually went to the Sixth Floor Museum just to see yeah. how everything was. And it's, it's a fascinating experience. Oh, I believe Until that. Until you have been there and you have looked at it and, and your opinions will change one way or the other. It was just really amazing. It, 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 that's, it, that's probably one of the most fascinating periods in American history yes. anyway. There's so much around it and, and grief and loss and imagination converge yes and create uh, whether it's whether it's the official story or the unofficial story or the conspiracy, the conspiracy theory, theories yes it, it doesn't matter because really when you put grief and loss and mourning and and that national pride together with imagination and human mm -hmm. storytelling yes you are going to get some of the most elaborate mm. or simple and best stories yeah you know that you can tell well really if you look at it isn't it that in a way where america lost a lot of her innocence too mm -hmm. 
you know, we had gotten past, not us personally, but gotten past Abraham Lincoln, and now here we are again when we really, I mean, those are the two biggies as far well, as it really is. It really is, and when you look at American history, we came from a people, of, we were a culture of rebels. Exactly. Our, our whole notion was a rebellion against the establishment. Mm -hmm. And then a hundred years in, the natural course of a, a nation of rebels is that someone will eventually rebel. Exactly. And, exactly. and you will have to prove that you can sustain what the people you rebelled against could not. Exactly. And that's how you survive. So the Civil War makes sense in that context. And then now I'll go 100 years further, mm -hmm. and your nation of rebels 200 years in, th it's forgotten its rebel nature that is that is it has. In innocence. We've, we've got this new innocence about us. We trust. Well, it's post-World War II, and we were successful, and, and, you know, we're the strong nation. Yeah, I mean, so there's so much trust, and there's so much hope yeah. in that era. Mm -hmm. and and arguable that you'd say you know, tragedy is is tragic we, we don't want it to happen mm -hmm. but there's a part of uh, of the the academic the scholar that looks back and says you know things happen in the right time at the right place yeah because we were in a very dangerous naivete in that in that period very of time. much so and coming out of world war ii like you said the mm -hmm. optimism the hope it was wonderful to have but it was dangerous because and, it puts you at the mercy of those that don't have it. Right, and and there was a little bit of a hint of it with the Cuban Missile Crisis, and, mm -hmm. and you kind of got a feeling that maybe things weren't as good as you thought, but Kennedy was so optimistic, and everybody thought, you know, here's this young president with this young, beautiful family, and bang, literally. And, and all of a sudden, you the whole yeah. world shifts on it a shifts. dime, and, and the 60s and the 70s become what they were. And I do think that, that, that the rebellion of those following years was born out of that experience. Absolutely. And it's a rebirth of the, of the, of the American spirit, because that's where we started. We yeah. were rebels. We, we didn't want the status quo. No. And then 100 years later, we had, we had to put down a rebellion, because yeah. we were rebels. <laughs> we were rebels. It's, it's in our it's nature. In our nature. So, um, What's next from here? Where are you gonna, what, what is I up? actually have a new book I'm working on now uh -huh. that's going to be a challenge. I don't know, most people don't know about it. There's a highway in British Columbia called the Highway of Tears. Uh, indigenous women have been murdered or disappeared from this particular area. Wow. And this has been going on for some time. And it's a big scandal, really, in Canada, well, in British Columbia. And I thought, well, suppose there was a generational serial killer out there. Wow. Yeah. So I have started to write about that. I'm very interested in indigenous peoples and uh, the experiences of natives as far as being um, taken from their families and forced to, you know, kill the Indian, save the man kind of thing. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. It, it's a tra the, There's a tragedy, too. Assimilation is a, is a painful process. It is. It and, is. And we learn, thank goodness, we learn over yes. time. But... It is those mistakes that we've made along the way that, are, again, they're cannon fodder for the imagination because mm -hmm. we've made so many horrific mistakes in the assimilation process. And it's not just in America that we're no, talking about. Been, yeah. yeah, we've been doing this as long as human beings could step away mm -hmm. from their own fireside and exactly. move to the next guy's fireside. Yeah. We have been trying to create a, a, yeah. a human culture. You will adapt to us. Yes. And, you know. you know, we move in and say you will adapt to us. They say, no, we, you will adapt to us. And then bam. And then bam. And so a lot of times in, in that conflict and that thing, we get true assimilation over time. Mm -hmm. we, I, I remember growing up in the 70s and early 80s and saying, you know, we are the, the American melting pot. It's, we are. it's a wonderful tapestry that we formed, painful tapestry. Very much the, so. The, you know, weaving that tapestry was a painful time because it, was. it wasn't always, it wasn't always, hey, how are you? Tell me about your culture. It was yeah. us trying to annihilate each other. Mm -hmm. and and, well, it wasn't so much, you have beautiful stuff. Let's. Can you bring some of that to us? Yeah. It was like, okay, leave your stuff behind. Come and have ours. Come and have ours. Oh, by the way, we like the colors of that, so we'll just grab it real quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the American flag. That I mean, true. let's face it, the yeah, colors, yeah, yeah that's British what and I'm French. Saying. Yeah. Guys, we have to wrap it up. That's my shut up card. Elizabeth and I have had a great time here. We're at Indie Book Fest in Orlando, Florida. Thank you so much to our partners and friends over at Famous Faces and Funnies. Rick Shea and his team are amazing. Space Coast Comics, Indie Originals, our great friend Josh Bauer at J. Bauer R for all these fantastic set pieces that we have on the set. Our great friends at the Coddler Emporium, Embellish Effects for all the help that they give Cosplay Michael. Our great friends at the Foxwood Wine Company because these chairs are really, really comfy. These are great. Yes, you guys rock. These are our great. friends over at Hearts Helping Others of Central Florida and Krypton Radio. 
These are people who share our videos, our artists, our authors all over the World Wide Web. We hope you'll become one of them. Please hit subscribe. Come back over and over again. We have been here at Indie Book Fest 2019 hanging with Elizabeth Horton Newton, the author of Stolen Gypsy. We're going to drop links down below so you can find all of Elizabeth's books uh, and all of her social media pages and all of those fun things that the internet knows about that I have no idea. So <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in and logging on. Keep coming back to see who we're hanging with next. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you, yes, I hope that was okay.